Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, you're going to meet a top-notch speaker who is going to teach us all how to go on a journey of self-discovery, her incredible journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. So I think we're all guilty of this from time to time. You're on the hamster wheel. You're trying to pay some bills. You're trying to feed your family. And, and suddenly you wake up and, and a decade has passed. I, I think all of us need to slow down and really um, take an inventory of what really matters. My next guest knows that very well. She's very passionate about it. Anne Ransom is in the studio. She's a coach consultant and facilitator. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we've known each other for many, many years and uh, we just got kind of reconnected. You were just in one of our studios not too long ago. And I wanted to bring you on to, to share your journey. So uh, you're speaking a lot these days about what really matters to people. Uh, and you were just sharing a story about you. Uh, you went to several events in several days and the speakers were speaking about the same thing. Yeah. And since I don't believe in coincidences, it was like, okay, this is amazing because I've been doing this work around prioritizing what matters. But one of the things that came out from all these four different events is there's another piece. It's not just what matters to me. It's the belief that I matter. And so we start there because I can't give other people what I don't have inside of me. And so that really was a quite a revelation to me to add that additional piece about we want to know we matter. We want to know that uh, we want to be seen and we want to know that we're safe. And this is universal. Tell us more about your journey. When did you first give your first speech? Do you remember? Oh, my goodness. Um, 20 ish years ago, I guess. I can't say that it was a speech per se. I did. I was in the radio industry and was in sales, and so I gave a lot of stand-up presentations. It was kind of the precursor, I guess you'd say, to an actual speaking. When I moved back to Dallas in 2005, I think I joined NSA a couple of years later because I had started doing training around how to sell, sell to women because women transact business differently than men do. And so that kind of, now that we're, now that you've jogged my memory, uh, it would have been uh, in 2005, six when I started doing Selling to Women. Yeah, and, and she's not just a, a regular speaker. She's given not one, but two TED Talks, which is, it really impresses me. We can't show the whole TED Talk, but let's go ahead and run a couple minutes of one of those. Let's go back in time. It's the year 1910. There are dirt roads, very few automobiles, and Halley's Comet has just been discovered. J.R. Dumas is a merchant. He owns the hardware store and the furniture store in the then tiny Rockwall, Texas. He was only 56 years old when the doctor told him that he had some kind of a heart condition and that he should go home and take it easy. And so he did. He walked home, walked out on his front porch, overlooking Wells College, sat down in his rocking chair, and basically didn't get up until the day he died. Decades later. J.R. Dumas was my great-grandfather. I never met him, but as you can guess, 
I heard this story my whole life. I still cannot imagine. I have so many things I want to do. Like today, I hope to convince each of you that age should be celebrated, that it should not be feared, and that there's things that we can all do to help prevent us from becoming victims of aging. Carl Jung says, I am not what happened to me, I am what I choose to become. Dr. Christine Northrup said, yes, growing older is inevitable, but aging, that's optional. And I have to point out that it's, there's a lot of pressure when you give a TED Talk. I mean, it's not like you can just ad lib. You have to practice it because they time you. Oh, yes, yes. And I had 11 minutes. And as you know from your days of speaking, sure. it's much harder to give an 11-minute speech than it is a 45-minute speech. And there's a clock ticking. Yes. <laughs> so you get to you see. Get the <laughs> you do get the hook. <laughs> well, so I'm so impressed. Now, you mentioned speaking to professional women quite a bit. Um, when you're speaking to professional women, what's your message? Well, first, well, I'm going to be adding this new piece that sure. you matter. Sure. Because that's where we have to start. But I think a lot of it is about taking a beat. We have to stop. We have to sit. One of the things that I hear so often is, you know, I don't have time to do the growth, the development, all of these sorts of things. Well, everything is a matter of prioritizing. That's why this new program is called Prioritizing What Matters. We all have the same amount of time. It's just how do I choose to spend it? And so a lot of it's about empowering us to make those choices. Well, I was on her social media, and I urge you to go out and, and follow her on YouTube and all of her other platforms. And one of the things that kept coming back is the transformation game. And as we put up their website, I want you to explain what it is and why it's so powerful. Well, I was first introduced to this right after it came out. Uh, my spiritual teacher bought a copy of it. We sat down, started playing the game. And um, many years later, well, now it's been eight years, I went to uh, Fendhorn, Scotland, which is where the game originated, to actually take the training to become an accredited facilitator. Why it's so powerful is that it's a tool for self-discovery, and it shows us what we believe about things. So before you play the game, you set an intention. And so I recently facilitated a game with a group of entrepreneurs, and one of them set their goal that they wanted to have their first million dollar year. And so as you play the game and you roll the dice, it's like Monopoly, except instead of landing on Park Place or uh, Baltic Avenue, you land on an angel square or an insight or a setback. So when you filter those things through your intention, and you land on this inside square that talks about um, your generosity of spirit, perhaps, then you filter that, and as the facilitator, I guide people in understanding what does that have to do with you hitting your first million dollar year? And so that's the benefit of the game, is it shows us those hidden things that we don't know are operating, you know, it's in our unconscious, in our subconscious, so that we can you know, we can't heal what we don't see. Yeah. So it gets things up where we can begin to see what's going on. Tell us one of your favorite client stories because you do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah. Well, I have a client right now that I adore, adore, adore. And uh, we had actually worked together in the radio business many years ago. And he called me about a year ago and said, you know, I'd like to get some coaching and, of course, I was all ears about that. But he had a specific request, and it was about spirituality. And he has become a hugely, fabulously successful businessman, owns many companies. But he wanted help in, you know, how the practical application of spirituality. It's wonderful that we believe what we believe, but how do we make that show up every day? where it's real, where it's tangible. And I think that's so often the disconnect, whether you follow a traditional religious path or something that people call more spiritual. It's how do we live it? How do I remember when I'm in the midst of chaos or difficulty, how do I remember the way I call it, there's a higher truth. 
there's something else going on and my job is to figure out what's really going on, not what is the appearance of what's going on. So uh, one of the things I love about you, Anne, as you're, as you're uh, looking into the viewer's eyes, as your eyes light up, this is your passion. You truly have found your calling, haven't you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I'm so blessed in that way um, because it's been a journey, I have to say. I've made a lot of detours and a lot of stops along the way. I have had a completely blessed life, not just now. I mean, my radio days, I was very lucky. I've had a great career, everything I've done. But this um, touches me down to my soul. Mm, I love that. In the final two minutes, I want to give, uh, give you a chance to talk to the person who's struggling because we all have setbacks. And for some people, you know, that setback can be something um, that you uh, kind of wallow in and people can wallow in a setback for decades. So why don't you look into the, uh, the viewer's eyes and, and give them some words of encouragement? Well, first of all, I believe you can do it. Whatever it is, you can do it. You know, there's a, um, I'm not sure who the philosopher was, but the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So start somewhere. And it may get you, may not get you very far, but if it gets you off the couch, if it gets you off your phone, take that first step. Call a friend. And I guess one of the things that I think has helped me the most is I call it sitting. I don't put a formal name of meditation or all of that. I sit. And I've had people say, well, you know, I prayed, but I didn't get an answer. And I gently and politely ask, but have you sat and listened? And I think we get inspiration from a lot of different places. We can get it from our dog. We can get it from the squirrel. I'm fascinated with the squirrels in my yard, and sometimes I'll take a 60-second break. So where can you find something to be grateful for? Even if it's something T90, it's something that helps break that energy of being stuck. And I hope that helps to know, and you're not alone. And I think that's the other thing. We're never alone, even when we feel that we are. And um, those are the things that I go back to. And you're truly inspirational. Thank you so much for sharing your heart and your wisdom with the world and, and your talents. We're going to end with her website. If you want to get in touch with, with her for coaching or, or speaking needs, annranson.com. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you, Jeff. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.